Hi, my name is Tamara and you are watching Things Even a Monkey Should Know. Thanks for watching again today. If you've watched some of my other videos, you already know that I am not a professional at this do-it-yourself stuff. I'm simply a girl who has figured out there are a lot of things around my house and around the yard and on the cars that I can do myself instead of paying someone a bundle of money to do it. And I like to share my discoveries with you. So today, I am going to be sharpening an axe blade using an angle grinder. So let's get started. So if you're like me, you have been preparing for the winter, even though it seems like winter has already come, um, and you may have already been splitting some wood or doing some other stuff, and you find that you have an axe that is chipped or dull, maybe not chipped, let's hope not chipped. Anyways, that's what I have found, is that my axe, my poor axe, is, uh, I don't know if you can see how bad the blade looks, but it is quite dull, and definitely it is time to take care of that and do some sharpening work on it. So you can totally do this with an angle grinder. You don't have to have a bench grinder, um, but there's a few things that you need. The first, of course, is going to be your dull axe. Uh, if your axe has uh, rust on it or a lot of dirt, you might want to have some WD-40 and some steel wool because you do want to clean off the rust before you start trying to sharpen your axe. You will want a large clamp of some sort. Um, if you have a vise, that would be more ideal um, because you, I will have to take an additional step in here to sharpen my axe that you will not have to if you have a vise. Um, you will want to have a bucket with some water in it. You probably can't see this. A bucket. You don't have to have a five gallon bucket. That's just all I happen to have around right now. And a sponge because in the process of grinding your axe, um, you don't want to get the blade too hot on the axe or it'll ruin the temper on it and it can cause the metal to become brittle and possibly chip or split or break the next time you use it. So you want to make sure that you have something to keep that blade cool. Um, of course, you will need your angle grinder, and you will need to have a blade on it that is for grinding. They make multiple types of blades for these, uh, and there's cutting blah, blah. <laughs> Sometimes my tongue gets twisted. There's cutting blades, and there's grinding blades, and there's all kinds of stuff. Anyways, make sure that you have one that is for grinding metal. And of course, you will need the safety accoutrements, which is something to protect your ears, something to protect your eyes, and just to be on the safe side, some gloves to protect your hands. And then the last thing that you may need, depending on how precise you want to be with your axe blade, is you will need a file. Make sure that you have one. I know mine doesn't look new, it's just stained. Um, but make sure that you have one that is not overly used or it'll just be frustrating. So first things first, always if you're not comfortable handling an axe or handling sharp objects, then don't do this yourself. Take it to somebody to get it done. It doesn't cost that much, but it would be worth it if you are afraid you're going to slice your hand off in the process. So that being out of the way, um, the first thing that I'm going to do is even though mine does not have my axe hit blade does not have rust on it. Just to make sure that it's good and clean for this, I am just going to go ahead and give it a little WD-40 bath and give it a little work with the steel wool. It's not sharp at all. You still should not run your finger or your hand along the blade because even though it is not sharp, I'm sure you all know this, humans are very cuttable. So. Uh, you could still possibly get yourself hurt. So I had a very easy job of it. This is just getting off a little of the excess wood and junk that's on there. And you can actually leave the WD-40 on there for uh, when you start to grind it. It's not going to hurt it. As long as you don't mind a little mess. Everybody knows WD-40 is a little messy. 
So you might have noticed a chunk of wood appeared in between uh, those two cuts. Uh, it would be easier, the next thing that we're going to do after cleaning the axe is we're going to go ahead and clamp it to the table so that it's uh, got something holding on to it basically. Um, but you want to have your blade where you can get to it easily and I would wind up grinding a lot of my table if I had it flat. So you want to find a little chunk of wood or something that you can just put under the axe head to support it. And by the way, see how my axe head, it doesn't move on the handle? If your axe head is loose, you probably just need to get a new axe because you do not want to risk having it come flying off, you know, the next time you use it or potentially even while you're trying to sharpen it. So safety always first because these things can seriously do some damage. So I've got this kind of propped the way I want it to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my clamp, just clamp it down really hard. C-clamp is pretty good for it because it has this wobbly end so that whatever the angle is it'll still get it. So that's that's pretty good. So um, let me just move you up closer. I'm sure you've noticed, hope I don't make anyone seasick, I'm sure you've noticed that there is an angle that runs along the axe blade edge and what you want to do whenever you're using the grinder is you want to just try to match that angle. I think it's about a 15 degree angle, but who's going to get a protractor out and measure that while they're trying to grind? So mostly just try not to change the shape of that edge and, and uh, just try to go along it. And the goal is that you want to bring this outermost edge back to a very fine point because that's what it was when you first bought it or when it was first made. Um, so the way that we'll do that is again just by running the grinder back and forth along this edge. And I'm going to work on this side for a while and then I'll flip it over and I'll work on the other side. And you may have to go back and forth several times. So one other thing to remember is that in the process of doing this again, stop every little bit and uh, sponge off your blade to make sure that it doesn't get too hot. Because again, if, if it gets too hot, it's going to ruin the temper of the steel and your blade will become brittle and that is just what we don't want to have happen. So I am now going to put on my protective gear and then we'll start. actually think that looks pretty good. I'm going to bring you in closer and uh, I don't know if you can see the difference. It's definitely shinier. We knew that would happen. I'll, um, let me bring the axe a little bit closer to you maybe. But there were all those nicks in it before and now they're all gone. Um, it's pretty even if you look at it from either end and it's got a little bit of stuff along the edge that needs to be filed off so that's the next thing I'm gonna do um, but the angle was basically the same or is basically the same as it was. I was trying very hard to keep that in order so I'm just gonna lay it down here awkward since I'm right now. I'm just going to give it a little file. I'm going to touch it. 
That is quite sharp. Um, if you really wanted to go crazy and get super duper fine sharpness, although you could split a hair on this one, um, you can get a sharpening stone and get it even more precise and more fine, but I'm splitting one with this and it's probably going to be dull again within the next few weeks. And uh, so that's, I'm not looking for something quite that fine. I just need it to be able to split my wood again. Right now it's glancing off and you don't want that to happen because that's a good way to get hurt. So we've got it sharp. Uh, I have a little cover for mine, which is a very good thing to have. Make sure that it is dry, which mine is, before you put this on. But uh, it's a good idea to keep it covered because, you know, you don't want a kid or a pet or just a random house guest to get hold of this accidentally and cut themselves. So a few additional things that we learned today. I forgot to take my glasses off my head, which I usually do. At least I remember them now. Usually I'd figure it out about two hours from now. The other thing that we learned is that steel wool is very flammable. So that was a good reminder that anything that is remotely flammable should be moved from the area where you're grinding because grinders do put off a lot of sparks, even when you're just grinding something as small as an ax head. So I hope that I helped you figure out or learn how to grind your ax head and sharpen it and uh, know that it's very easy actually to do and it doesn't take that long so don't let it be something that sneaks up on you and you keep thinking oh I can deal with using this dull ax even though it's so much easier if they're sharp. And also if you happen to have a vise instead of just using a clamp your ax will be sitting straight up so you'll be able to work it from both sides at the same time so you won't have to stop and flip like I did. But again, just don't get too carried away and forget to douse it or cool it off with water now and then because you will be sorry. So again, I hope this helped you. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again next time. And please remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and many thanks to those of you who already have.